Thought you knew all there was to know about the true north strong and free? These videos about Canada will have you seeing this beautiful country in a whole new way. It's bigger than the entire European Union, more than 30% larger than Australia, five times as big as Mexico, and about the same size as 81,975 Walt Disney Worlds put together. What a country! And you'll not believe what's been turning up there lately. 15 shocking things recently discovered in Canada. Narciss Snake Dens This menacing den of snakes has been referred to as many things throughout its known history. Wildlife preserve, cesspit of horror, pit of snakes, den of the devil, you name it. The purpose and theme of each title implies the same thing. However, paying homage to the insane and otherworldly amount of snakes that gather together to mate, Narciss sees tens of thousands of garter snakes arrive annually to hibernate and eventually mate in one massive, writhing ball of serpentine love. Most snakes will pay no mind to any humans approaching the area. They're too busy taking care of business. For this reason, the imagination evokes more fear than necessary. Still, it's hard not to with thousands of snakes slithering about. At one time, the population of serpents approached 70,000, according to experts that have been studying the event for years. As of late, unprecedented weather and roadkill incidents have quickly eroded the population as they attempted to migrate. They go here to hibernate in the natural cracks and burrows found in the porous limestone. Then, with the thawing winter, the hibernating beasts awake and get right to making babies. Lots of time lost, you know. These balls of snakes can grow massive. So despite the awkwardness of watching a bunch of animals mate, this is a prime time snake watching opportunity for the serpent lovers of the world. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. Imagine what this diver is thinking right now. When most people think of Canada, they probably think snow, trees, mountains, and prairies. But they don't think water, rivers, lakes, and oceans. Canada has three bordering oceans, Pacific, Arctic, and Atlantic. And what about the Great Lakes, the largest group in a chain of large lakes that lies along the southern boundary of the Canadian Shield? So, wherever this image was captured, a diver in the transformer-like machine buried in the sandy bottom of some undisclosed location in Canada might be cause for alarm. Is this where all the transforming vehicle machines have been hiding all this time? This could be a new Transformers movie, Rise of the Canadian Machines. Maybe this is how the long dormant villain bots are awakened in this movie's opening scene. Tough to say, but we think we're onto something here. What do you think? Leave a comment with the hashtag Sweet Topic. Bean Puzzle Tombstone In rural Russia's cemetery, you'll find many traditional gravestones lining the thousands of people that passed. One headstone dramatically stands out from the rest. The so-called bean grave marker is etched with a crossword code rather than the typical RIP. A message below the cryptid code urges the reader to meet them in heaven. What could this all mean? It took over 100 years for somebody to finally crack the code. Dr. Samuel Bean's first wife, Henrietta, one name engraved on the stone, died just seven months after the two were married. His second wife, Susanna, also met her untimely end after only a few months of marital status. Could this be an accident or could the good doctor really be an insane one? Bean buried his two loves in the same grave side by side and constructed the mysterious tombstone above without telling a single person what the code means. In the end, he took the secret to his reasoning with them to the grave when he was lost overboard on a ship destined for Cuba. So many people came to try and solve the riddle that by the 1980s it was entirely illegible and had to be replaced with a replica. The groundskeeper said he cracked the code in the 40s but refused to reveal the secret. Finally, in the 70s, a 94-year-old woman solved the code and revealed to the world what it said and how. Beginning on the seventh character of the seventh row down and reading in a spiral fashion, the inscription reads, In memoriam of Henrietta, first wife of S. Bean, M.D., who died 27th September, 1865, aged 23 years, 2 months, and 17 days, and Susanna, his second wife, who died 27th April, 1867, aged 26 years, 10 months, and 15 days. Two better wives, one man never had. They were gifts from God and are now in heaven. May God help me, SB, to meet them there. 
Smoking Hills. These hills might look like the landscape of hell, but these cliffs in the Canadian Arctic have been burning for centuries and don't seem to be stopping anytime soon. Found in the Arctic Ocean, near Canada's Northwest Territories, you can find these barren, red-striped, smoldering rocks that have been said to be so hot they could burn a hole through solid metal. The seething landscape was aptly named the Smoking Hills. Just imagine the first European explorers to happen across this land. What kind of mentality and ideas do you think popped into their heads, with their archaic beliefs and ideals still pervading? The land of hell is what many sailors would come to refer to this place. The first ever reported sighting was by the Irish explorer Captain Robert McClure in the early 1800s. The report tells of a story where the captain and crew had journeyed to the Canadian Arctic searching for the long-lost explorer Sir John Franklin, who disappeared five years earlier on an expedition to map the Northwest Passage. According to these recordings, McClure went ashore and brought back a piece of the smoking rock. Unfortunately, when he placed it on the deck, it burned a hole right through the wooden desk. Charge Look, we all know you can find McDonald's around the globe and in plenty of numbers, but a float? That has to be one of a kind. The aptly named McBarge was just that and saw a floating McDonald's installed on a barge where boat crews would float through and collect a meal. It was first constructed in 1986 for the World Exposition on Transportation and Communication. Unfortunately, since that time, it's fallen from disused to wreck. While the barge still floats, the restaurant closed shortly after the expo. For 30 years, it stayed anchored in the Burrand Inlet. In 2015, when Howard Meekin bought the barge and moved it to be refurbished, it was the first time it had moved since the 80s. No matter what the barge transforms into, the McBarge will forever remain in the hearts of locals and those who got to see it. Fairy Forest Redwood Park in Surrey, Australia was already a dazzling sight of nature before it became a fairy forest. Today, hundreds if not thousands of vibrantly colored fairy homes can be found scattered throughout the entire forest. You can't help but feel that you're in some sort of fairy kingdom while there. Some of the houses can be considered fairy mansions, while others are more simplistic. It's now become a traditional children's activity. The park itself exists thanks to an incredible birthday gift. In 1881, twins Peter and David Brown, who were both deaf, received 40 acres of land for their 21st birthday. The land was already logged and ready for farming. It was turned over to them, but they decided there were enough farms in the area. They wanted to turn the area into a magical forest where children and adults alike could cool off and immerse themselves in another world. The park is home to the largest stand of redwood trees north of the 49th parallel. Before the brothers turned over the land to the public, they constructed a lasting, two-story treehouse for which they lived until they passed in 1949. Ice Hotel Talk about a genuine winter wonderland, even the hotel is constructed from ice and snow alone. Quebec is ensuring sure Canadians and Americans don't miss out on one of the most incredible experiences you can have on an entire continent. The temporary Hotel de Glace is the only hotel ever made entirely of snow and ice in North America. Just because it's made of snow and ice does not mean it's cold inside. Ever heard of an igloo? It works much the same way like that, except on a much larger scale. You'd be surprised how warm ice buildings like this one can get. The structure was fashioned from 40,000 tons of snow. If you can't make it on site, they're offering digital tours so that everyone can see what it's like inside. It could easily be Elsa's ice palace from Disney's animated film Frozen. Detailed ice carvings and sculptures can be found throughout, and it's nothing short of incredible. The idea for the Ice Hotel started in 1996 when an entrepreneur saw Sweden's Ice Hotel and thought Quebec should have one as well. It opened in 2001. A team of 30 workers and 15 sculptors work for six weeks a year to craft and erect the hotel in time for its January opening. Giant Nuclear Shelter Doomsday preppers around the globe have hidden vaults beneath the ground chock full of supplies, shelter and safety. Unfortunately, none of them are as prepared as Bruce Beach, who has constructed an epic, enormous subterranean shelter out of 42 recycled school buses topped with layers of concrete, soil, and steel. According to Bruce, it's his attempt to save humanity from Armageddon. The aptly named Arc 2 Shelter can be found in Horning Mills, Canada, 
It nearly stretches across 10,000 square feet of land and is said to be able to house over 500 people. That's enough to create a small village should the need arise. The architect believes that the nuclear war will inevitably occur in the coming years, so he began constructing the shelter in the early 1980s. To this date, he has cumulatively spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the project. Still, he sees every dime spent as a necessity to save the human race from total extinction. Big Lonely Doug Atop Vancouver Island's western coast, a lanky, lonely tree doesn't stand tall on the cliffside but appears to be nothing more than an out-of-place tree. Don't be fooled, this is one massive ancient tree that's become an icon for the country. Big Lonely Doug, as it was called, was named after its species, the Douglas fir. It stands tall and proud among a clearing, a solitary tree surrounded by stumps and the remnants of an extensive logging operation. To date, it soars a whopping 230 feet in the air, and its trunk is as wide as some apartments. Local conservationists estimate its age to fall in the range between 750 and 1200 years old. Despite the region's prosperous logging industry that amounted to an astounding 99% of the old growth Douglas firs in British Columbia having been cut down, the loggers spared Big Lonely Doug from being felled in 2012 to ever preserve the site as a once fruitful location of wood. The exact reason why this tree alone was saved is unknown, but it will forever be a bleak reminder of the once stunning forest that stood there. <laughs> Signpost Forest The only foresty thing about this location is the trees in the backdrop. The Signpost Forest in Canada is a pathway exhibit of thousands of different signposts throughout many years. There are warning signs, street signs, and even religious signs that adorn the path. It's located deep within the most densely wooded areas of Canada, in the Yukon. Here, instead of gorgeous tree canopies, you can get these haphazardly hung signposts that, if inspected well enough, are more like a timeline through Canadian signpost history. According to the stories in the visitor center that offers tours and maintains the collection, a U.S. soldier by the name of Carl K. Lindley was the first person ever to hang a sign here. In 1942, while helping construct the Alaska Highway, a strategic roadway project undertaken by the U.S. government during World War II to increase supply transportation and troop movement should the need arise. The first sign proudly displayed Danville, Illinois, 2,385 miles. Though the original sign has been lost to the sands of time, a replica has been erected in its place and tens of thousands of people have come to make their mark. Sockeye Salmon Run Every four years, a unique natural phenomenon occurs in Kamloops, British Columbia area. It's hailed as one of the most beautiful migrations to take place on the planet, and it's easy to understand why. Like clockwork, sockeye salmon return to their spawning grounds in the first three weeks of October. But every fourth year, dubbed a dominant run by researchers, the salmon is so numerous that the water turns crimson. The fish, numbering in the millions after an unexplained population explosion, returned with forces so thick that the atoms resembled an undulating crimson ribbon as they swam their way upstream. When 34 million salmon pop up out of nowhere, it's safe to say they're probably on to something with their behavior. Even though researchers are unaware of how these salmon navigate their way home after being gone so long, it's one of the most spectacular observations of animal life humans can see. If you ever have a chance to see it, make sure you do. You won't be disappointed. A town called Asbestos The name Asbestos in modern society is enough to make people cringe and health inspectors enraged. The cancer-causing material that was once called a miracle material is now the bane of humanity's existence. Think about how the town of Asbestos, Canada feels now that its name has been dragged through the mud and buried. To be fair, it was called that because it held the world's largest asbestos mine which you can imagine didn't go over too well with the people that resided there once all the health revelations started appearing. In fact, mining here only stopped in the last decade, years after the material was already considered highly hazardous to humans. In Russia, there are still significant asbestos mines in the town of Asbest. The hard truth is the US EPA is in the works of approving new uses of the material in consumer products. The few remaining mines in existence will likely be the only place where this material can be gathered. While Asbestos Quebec was shut down around 10 years ago, 
If there's much money to be made through foreign trade, you better believe they'll open that mine back up. There's still plenty of the material buried down there to be harvested. Nature's Time Post There are many strange balancing rocks located worldwide, but Canada is home to one of the most impressive. The dubbed balancing rock is a force of time and nature standing tall along the cliffs overlooking St. Mary's Bay. It stands out amongst the other rock formations around it. Tourists come here because they don't believe it to be accurate. It is. This column of rock sits at the very edge of the cliff, capable of falling forward at any second. Yet for hundreds of years, it's remained there, idle and proud. You can clearly see that the erosion from the bay has caused many other similar looking columns to already have fallen. One attempt by fishermen saw them tie lines to the rock and try to pull it over by use of their powerful motor engines. It was no use, the rock wasn't budging. Frozen Bubbles Abraham Lake is a natural wonder where scientists get an unprecedented glance at prehistoric atmosphere frozen in lake bubbles that have been trapped there for some time, like millions of years. By digging massive ice columns and collecting them still frozen, scientists can sample the air trapped within the bubble. We're talking possibly the very same air the dinosaurs breathed. As impressive as that sounds, it also comes with a dark side. Although produced entirely by nature, the alluring ice-encased bubbles hold unknown hazardous gases that could potentially kill a human with just a whiff. Scientists are taking extreme measures not to breathe in any air. That isn't even mentioning the catastrophic climate pollution should these highly carbon-emitting bubbles pop and release the toxins into the air. This is a genuine concern for conservationists about the warming planet. As lakes like this one thaw and release that air, it will accelerate the climate crisis. Even though the methane gases trapped within are highly toxic, they're stunning to observe while still frozen. It's safe to walk the lake and observe the varied colors you never thought a lake could produce. As the light bounces through the trapped molecules in the water and bubbles, the dance of light can be refracted throughout. Polar Bear Prison Forget what you know about harsh human prison life, what these polar bears have to endure is just short of suffering. This is no ordinary prison. Guards roam the halls offering water through tiny windows to the prisoners inside. But these prisoners aren't what you might think. These are aggressive polar bears that are being subdued. If they manage to calm themselves, they'll be released in just a couple of weeks. But for those stubborn bears, it often takes a considerable amount of time. The former aircraft storage hangar outside the northern Canadian town of Churchill, Manitoba is the world's only prison for polar bears. To be fair, not many places would require a prison for polar bears. However, one of nature's most fearsome land predators often invades the town in force at certain times of year because the tiny town sits slap in the middle of their winter migration route up to Hudson Bay. Sometimes, if they find plenty of food in the town, they'll stop their migration. This is precisely what the townsfolk don't want and have created the prison to deter. The prison is more of rehabilitation to get them on their way back to the natural migration pattern. Perfectly Preserved Dinosaur Archaeologists have been turning up dinosaur fossils for quite some time. This exceptionally well-preserved dinosaur changes everything about the game. The fact that there may be some completely intact, preserved dinosaurs buried out there gives scientists so much hope. They even estimate we can know what some actually looked like, including what color they were in the next decade. Researchers said of the find, we don't just have a skeleton, we have the dinosaur as it would have been. That includes the content of its stomach, which still showed what it ate over 100 million years ago, just before the calamity erased the dinosaurs from the face of the planet. It's being held as the best discovery in dinosaur history. It's reinvigorated archaeologists with a sense of motivation and purpose. With the creature's skin, armor, and even some of its guts intact, researchers are astounded at its nearly unprecedented level of preservation. The countries we know well today weren't always as such. There's a million years long mystery shrouding planet Earth that drives some humans to madness. Whether it's the discovery of a million year old preserved dinosaur, or a dark history of mining, all countries have their fair share of things to be discovered, some more notably than others. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get all our content delivered right to your inbox.